and uh, good morning to all of you. Once again, on behalf of the Commission, we would like to apologize for the late start. We thank you for you know, taking the time to attend this meeting at short notice. We thank the good Lord for making it possible for us to gather to discuss affairs of our dear nation. And I say this nation is, a, is God's nation. It's his beloved nation. And we thank him for the gift of life. We declare that this is the day that he has made. We rejoice and we are glad in it. I'd like to welcome particularly our, the leaders of our political parties to this meeting. We are all aware of the unfortunate call to glory of the presidential candidate of the Ghana Freedom Party, Madame Bikuya Donko, a dear friend of the commission and a dear friend to myself. We are deeply saddened by her passing, and we pray that the good Lord will grant her rest eternal. It was just the other day that she was with us, I think at our last IPAC meeting, and therefore it is with sadness that we received news of her unfortunate passing away. On behalf of the, of the Electoral Commission, we express our deepest condolences to her family and to the Ghana Freedom Party. Our like us gathered here to observe a minute silence in her honor. Can you check it for us? May Madame Equia Donko rest in peace and rise in glory. This morning, our task here is simple. It is to brief you of the Commission's position regarding the 2024 presidential ballot. And I know there have been a lot of discussions about it in the media landscape. But I'd like to assure you that there's no cause for alarm, even before I move forward, because I see Dr. Tanko looking very jittery and taking off his glasses. <laughs> As you may be aware, the commission received notice of the home call of Madame Bikria Donko on the 29th of October, 2024. Per Article 54 of the 1992 Constitution and Regulation 13.4 of CI 127, the commission wrote to the Ghana Freedom Party and provided them a period of 10 days within which to file a new candidate. Article 50 of the 4 of the 1992 Constitution reads, where at the close of nominations, but before the election, one of the candidates dies, a further period of 10 days shall be allowed for nomination. In that respect, the commission wrote to the Ghana Freedom Party and asked them to present a new candidate within 10 days. In fulfillment of that request, the Ghana Freedom Party presented Mr. Pia Kubi, who was before then the vice presidential candidate to Madame Ikria Donko. The party presented him as the presidential candidate of the Ghana Freedom Party. He and the party went on to submit their nomination forms on the 5th of November and our technical teams went to work immediately reviewing these, the nomination forms. At the end of the process, they detected a number of errors and some illegalities with the form. The candidate's attention was drawn to these errors and the party was provided an opportunity to correct them. They did that. In the view of the commission, it was not in our bosom to provide the political party the opportunity to correct some of the illegalities that we found on the form. In that respect, the party did not draw their attention to it because the commission does not feel that it is in its bosom 
to allow any political party to correct illegalities with the form. The commission, therefore, as at yesterday, wrote to the party and to the candidate disqualifying him from contesting the 2024 presidential election. This morning, we are here to inform you of the commission's decision to maintain the presidential ballot as it is. As you may be aware, and I believe all of you have representatives in the printing houses, we are almost 90% complete with the printing of presidential ballots. And you are also aware that following the passing of Madame Ekwia Donko, we requested the printing houses to cease printing until you know, the, you know, the law had taken its course. Now that the presidential candidate or the nominee has been disqualified, the commission is to, would like to inform you that the balloting, the printing would proceed on the current ballot as is in the interest of time and to save this country millions of CDs. And so our task here this morning is very simple. We are not here to change positions. We are not here to reballot. We are simply here to inform you that the commission intends to notify our printing houses to proceed with the presidential ballot as is. It will proceed with the ballot that bears the name and the image of the name of the Ghana Freedom Party, their symbol and the image of Madame Ikwe Adonko. And we believe that a lot of discussions and advertisements will go out to prevent the citizenry from voting for her. So this is our mission here this morning. It is a simple one, as I said. We'd like to thank you for your time and your attention. Thank you. I believe that the whole country and any interested Ghanaian living anywhere knows that Madame Ikuya Donko has passed away. So it is very unlikely that people would vote for her to win the election. In any case, in any case, if one or two mischief makers vote for her, those votes will be annulled. They will not be counted for anything. But I can assure you that the whole world and all the voting population are aware that Madame Ikuya Donko is passed, has passed away. So it is very unlikely that you know, people would vote for her. And if there are any such votes, they will be annulled. I know that Mr. Tanko had also acknowledged receipt of the summaries, and he indicated that he will be picking his, uh, his hard drive with the register today. And I think he's acknowledged with gratitude the summaries. Because I'd like, like to mention again that the commission is under no obligation to provide breakdowns or summaries of the register. What we are required by law to do is to provide the parties with a certified register. And we have done that in fulfillment of the law. Yes, because we are all working together, you accommodate the views and the you know, requests of political parties. And, and therefore, it is not a, a challenge to do so. But it's important to place on record, as Citizen Atu said, is record keeping that we are not required by law to provide summaries or breakdown of the register to the political parties. So I think that what we've done, we've gone over and above what we are required to do. And so I think that settles it. I think that Mordecai wrote, talked about the illegalities. I don't think it is our place to discuss what the illegalities are, whether it is with the PF, GFP candidates nomination or with the, P, uh, the um, PNC. PNC. We are all aware that the PNC is in court. It is not our place to discuss illegalities. Those illegalities will be referred to the security agencies to, to deal with. But it, we do not believe that it is our place to, you know, to discuss illegalities. I think Citizen Atu wanted to know 
the law on which we are standing. If you look at Regulation 72B of CI 127, it requires that the nomination form of each candidate in an election for president shall be signed. I, I was just mentioning that Regulation 72B of CI 127 states as follows. The nomination form for each candidate in an election for president shall be signed by no less than two persons who are registered voters in the area of authority of each district assembly. And therefore, candidates must ensure that the supporters that they provide to fill their nomination forms for each district are indeed registered voters of that particular district. You cannot pick and choose as you please or find persons in one district and you know, document them as your supporters in another district. That in itself is an illegality because the law is very, very specific that for each district, you must have two persons. And so if you are a presidential candidate, the onus is on you to ensure that the candidates or the supporters that you present are indeed of that district and from that district that they support your candidature. And so this is what we used to disqualify him because on the face of his form, it was detected that some candidates, some supporters had been brought from other districts to support him in districts where they were not registered voters. Okay, I, I, I understand. I think that it's important that our laws are not, you know, do not really take into account, you know, such occurrences. However, the law refers to a situation where the candidate, a candidate withdraws after, you know, nomination, after the printing of, you know, after the printing of ballots and, and so on. The law provides an opportunity for the commission to, to continue with the ballot, as it, the ballot paper as it is. However, it is not clear on death and situations like this. And even if you look in the law, CI 127 and the Constitution, it doesn't expressly focus on a presidential candidate. If you read the provision, 54, you go down, you realize that it's mainly talking about a parliamentary candidate. So, of course, we've, we've had to stretch the law but there's no clear provision that says that when a candidate dies and the candidate is on the ballot, you should use the ballot as it is. However, if you look at CI 127, Regulation 10.5, it says, where a duly nominated candidate whose name appears on the nomination list displayed at the constituency center withdraws as a candidate after ballot papers and related election notices have been printed, the ballot papers and related notices may continue to include the name and other particulars of the candidate. So basically what we are saying is that we don't have very clear provisions. I believe that after the elections we can all, based on what has happened this experience, we can re-look at the CI 127 and fine tune it to, to take care of such situations. So we'd like to thank you very, very much. Oh. Evans, we have to go. We have to, we have to go. We'd like to thank you very much. At this juncture, we like to crave your indulgence to bring the meeting to an end. Yeah. The commission has a meeting going, a planning meeting of all its regional directorates. So we'd like to crave your kind indulgence to bring the meeting to an end. Thank you very much. No. Let's have a closing. Let's have a closing.